In this tutorial, I will explain the static analysis of truss problem. So this is the problem which we are going to solve. This is our ANSYS classic environment. This is also called as mechanical APDL. First, what kind of analysis you want to do? That analysis type you have to specify. So here this comes under static structural. That's why it select structural analysis. Okay. Then this is our problem. This problem we have to discretize. That is the first initial step. Discretization means this complex problem we are splitting into some small finite elements. So here one support is there. There you can consider one node. Here another support is there. You can consider another node. By joining these two nodes, we can create an element. In that way, we have to split this complex problem into some simple nodes and elements. So here to totally describe this problem, I have considered 10 nodes. Joining 10, 10 nodes. By joining all these 10 nodes, I have created the elements as shown here. Based on the given dimensions, you consider this as origin and note down the coordinates for all the elements as shown here. That is the first step. Here we have applied one vertical load. On the other side, then one inclined load is acting at an angle of 60 degrees. So that's why that inclined load I am splitting into its components, horizontal component and vertical component. Now how to start this problem? Once the type of analysis is described that is structural, the next step is you have to set go, you have to go for preprocessor. In the preprocessor, based on the given problem, you have to set the element type. So here different links are there. That's why you can, you can consider this as a link element. Suppose it's a cantilever beam or simply supported beam, you have to go for beam element. Okay, it's a solid solid structure in, the, in, the, in that case you have to go for solid element. So here go to the element type, add then click on add so different types of elements are there link beam solid etc so here i am taking link element so first consider this link 3d finite 180 okay then okay after that go for the real constant real constant means what is the here we are representing a 3d object link means it is having three dimensions length and cross sectional area length will display here but cross section area we are storing internally so that you can do with the help of a real constants <coughs> real constants add add then select this link okay then what is the area 0 0.01 meter square area i am taking for this particular link okay whatever unit you are giving as input you will get the same unit in the output so meter square is my input so I'll get the deflections or I'll get the displacements in meters only. Okay. Close. Then go to material properties. What is the material of this particular link? Material property we can define with the material properties, material models, structural, linear material. I'll take one isotropic material, elastic material, isotropic. And material property means Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio you have to enter. Young's modulus I will consider as 2 into 10 to the power of 11 Newton per meter square 2e11. Poisson's ratio 0 0.27 I will take. Okay. Okay. Material properties are over. Now we have to go come for the modeling part. Now we have to go for modeling. Go to modeling then create. I will create all these nodes. Nodes in Active CS. Node 1 is 0, 0. Okay. Apply. Node 2 that is 12, 0. Apply. Node 3 2.4, 6. Apply. Node 4 9.6. Comma six apply node five minus three comma twelve apply node six three comma twelve apply node seven nine comma twelve apply node eight fifteen comma twelve 
apply node 9 that is 3 comma 16.5 apply node 10 9 comma 16.5 okay this is the last node you can click okay nodes are created like this after creating the nodes go for elements then select through nodes so you have to select like this elements auto numbering through nodes okay then 1 and 2 is my first element 2 4 second element in this way you can form the elements okay, here you can follow any order it's not a problem okay in this way the model we have generated after that the next step is you have to go for modeling part is over that means pre-processor part is over now you have to go to solution then go for define loads apply structural then displacement means constraints go to displacements on nodes select this particular node apply here I want to constrain this in all degrees. So all DOF, okay. So this is arrested totally. Next, again select on nodes, select node 2. Here is the roller support. Click on apply. It's not all DOF, it's only in y direction because it's a roller support. Okay. This is only in y direction. Next. Here you have to apply load. Then structural, not displacements, go for forces on nodes select this node apply then in y direction what is the value 44480 four, four, newtons 44480 four, four, upward positive i want to apply in downwards so negative okay this is applied in the downward direction so here coming to this particular side we have to split this inclined node into its two components Horizontal component is this, vertical component is this, then again go for force on nodes, this select this node, apply, then vertical direction, the value is 41298, apply, then again select this node, in horizontal direction, fx, it is now positive because in this direction x is positive. 16 5 to 5 5 to 5 okay now the loads are applied now constraints are given loads are applied now it is ready to solve then go for solve current ls okay now solution is done close this to get the results what you have to do is you to go to the general post processor then plot results then contour plot select nodal solution then here go for DOF solution displacement vector sum deformed with undeformed model click on ok then you will get all the nodal displacements here red color shows the maximum maximum displacement here maximum displacement is there at this particular node that node is node 8 because here maximum load is acting that is 44 kilonewton then automatically here you will get maximum displacement so that displacement is 0 0.0017 meters then this is graphical representation you want to get these values in the form of a list then go for list results then select nodal solution DOF solution, displacement vector sum and OK. You will get all the values in the form of a list.
here if you observe node 8 you are getting the maximum displacement this is 0 point that is nothing but this value this is 10 power minus 2 remaining all are in 10 power minus 3 means those are very less this is the maximum displacement in this way you can find the maximum displacements when the load is applied on the structure once the displacement is known you can get the stress and strain so that is the static analysis of a first problem